Blog Talk Radio. Everybody. Good evening to all our friends and family around our beloved planet. And a special welcome to everyone listening to the archives. Welcome to Dr. Catherine May's Blog Talk Radio program, Channel Panel. Today is Wednesday, October 8, 2014. And for our program this evening, we have Dr. Catherine May our host and channel. And joining us tonight, we have our loving family members, O'Hara and Omara, Prime Creator. This is Meg Davis, your host, your co-host, calling in from the greater Atlanta area in Georgia. And our host, Catherine, is calling from her cabin in the woods of Canada. Good evening, Catherine. Hi, Meg. Yes, I'm curled up by the fire, because <laughs> it's pretty cold up here. I came up to the North Woods for one last trip this summer to close things up, so it's sort of bittersweet, you know, the end of summer. So, hi everybody, and I want to thank Meg for managing the panel and all that entails, and I do apologize, I can't do the um, the start meeting conference call tonight. Uh, it's just not possible given the way I called in. So I apologize for that, but I have been opening the conference call every week. So those of you who might want to call in and listen on your phone um, or call in to listen to the archives by phone, That's really why we do it. So we have um, the Internet Archives on Blog Talk, and we have phone archives at smartmeeting.com. And those phone numbers are on the website and also on the Facebook page. So that's just a little announcement for tonight. And in case we have some new people, we probably should tell them who we are. So Yes. Usually I'm the host, but tonight Meg is running the show, (laughs) so I'm going to introduce Meg. (laughs) This is Meg Davis, my co-host, and she told you she's in Atlanta, and this is pretty wonderful, isn't it? I can call from Canada, and you can call from Atlanta, and there are people on the line from all over the world. It's just, this is really wonderful technology, even though there are sometimes some glitches, but welcome, Meg. Meg is our in-house expert on nutrition and Chinese medicine and acupuncture and all other, all other things having to do with uh, alternative medicine. And some of you are familiar with our Healing for Ascension calls on Sunday. So Meg has a feature there where we've been discussing nutrition and healing. So I recommend to everyone... And we now have wonderful folks on our team who are taking out those pieces from the Blog Talk radio calls and posting them. Um, uh, They will be on our new website. They're posted on uh, the Healing for Ascension Tour page. So there are lots more ways that people can um, get a hold of our 
information. How about the manual, Peg? Is that finished yet? It is. Um, when you, when you get back into the states, you'll have it in your email box. Oh, good. They've been perfecting and revising and organizing it, so we really have something wonderful to look forward to. Meg has created a small guide for how to change your life by changing what you eat. It's simple, it's direct, it's a beautiful small package for people who really want to make a dramatic change in their healing process, in their the way they feel physically, and I guarantee you folks, you will be amazed. Um, I just I was laughing just before the show as I was having a snack, and I thought, oh, I have to I have to laugh about this with people. I was having a half a banana sliced with almond butter on it. And I thought, this is the snack that Meg taught me. (laughs) And oh, boy, is it good. (laughs) And I am ready to go. (laughs) So that's just some of the the latest information. But I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Meg. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. (laughs) Um, This is Meg Davis, and I'll just finish up um, letting, for people that need a little bit more personal information about their health, I'm um, offering to email and discuss any kind of personal issue you have going on that's not being solved by your nutritional changes or you need a little help getting started. And really, there's no question that's that's too simple. It really is. We all start where we are, and I'm happy to plug in your own journey wherever wherever you are. And you can reach me at btwdavis at gmail.com, or you can also message me at my Facebook page at wisdomwithin-megdavis. And our host is Dr. Catherine E. May, and... Catherine's website is whoneedslight.org, which is just um, a huge resource meeting many needs at many levels. First of all, her book, Who Needs Light, who Mother God called the Manual for Ascension. It's very different from her channeled messages. This is a book that was written over several years with help from the masters and Catherine's own professional career as a clinical psychologist for 40 years, um, working with her mentor, Amos. And it helps us to dig out and uncover with a loving flashlight, as Omara and O'Hara have given us permission to use, um, all all the things in our lives that prevent us from living in our highest light. That's an oversimplification but it is a beautiful manual, and I highly recommend you ordering it um, on her website, as well as you can find Sananda's new scriptures and messages that Catherine has channeled with Mother, Father, God, and other masters over several years. So you just could go in there like I did and stay for weeks. And believe you me, when I found Catherine's website, that's what I did. I was so ravenous for information and truth about our higher understanding of where we are in the multiverse, that I just devoured it. So uh, you can't just have one. It's like a piece of popcorn. So just <laughs> help yourself to all of it. <laughs> and That's true. It's all uh, free. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, And we also have two Facebook pages that is managed by our loving Gabriella, and her amazing team of admin uh, administrators who are, I think, about 20 big, um, between 10 and 20 people. I think they come in and off sometimes, but they are devoted light workers who are um, working with each other and with us on helping us clear away anything that's standing in our way as well as um, supporting the Facebook pages that we are um, 
really developing a master class where we are self-monitoring and really being able to come into a group consciousness to support each other with our own process. Mm -hmm. The the Facebook page is Healing for Ascension Tour, where you get all the posts on Catherine's messages as well as if we're on tour, where we are. And to get to know each other more individually is Healing for Ascension Tour Group, which I loved Gabriella's message. I think it was last week. Um, congratulations, X Y Z. You are the thirteenth, the thirteen thousandth member on the Facebook page. So we are just growing our family and developing an understanding of what it really means to be one, which is really magical. So that's I think that covers a big piece, Catherine. Anything else you want to add? I'm just thinking about the page, how the group page. It's so fascinating. I wish I could spend more time there, but I I do try to read the thought for the day. And those messages are just brilliant. They're done by the administrators, and they take turns. And each day there is just a magnificent message personally crafted with such feeling they take a topic and really make it personal. And they take something from the channelings or a, a piece from the book and they expand on it and and describe the way they view it and how they've used it. And it's so helpful and each one is like a little gem. So when you say this is a master class, it really is. The level of communication there, the level of um, what's the articulateness, <laughs> eloquence, mm-hmm. that's better, mm-hmm. <laughs> is just thrilling to me. And I hope when other people read it that they will realize how much time and effort. I know that each one of those daily messages is a day's work, at least. Mm -hmm. And I know Mm -hmm. the people who do them know a week and a half ahead of time, and they're writing it a week and a half or two weeks. So these are really... Um, like articles, and they're beautifully crafted, and I know that people will get a lot from reading them. And there's one every day. So they've taken, you know, I've been channeling every day, so they've been taking what's been channeled and applying it in this beautiful way. So it's, you know, people who say they don't do Facebook, well, you don't know what you're missing because, This is nothing like the other Facebook pages I've seen. Nothing. It's not about your sister-in-law's birthday party. It is really substantive um, lessons and classes. So I recommend anyone who wants to expand their consciousness and be a part of group work. It's fascinating. So well, Catherine, if you'll yes, I want to interject yeah. real quick. Um, so the thought for the day yesterday, pretty sure it was yesterday, was from mm-hmm. our Gabriella mm-hmm. on unconditional love, and yeah. then she, you followed up with a message from her, her higher self, twin flame, mm-hmm. on unconditional love. And what a power pack. What a power pack duo. It was it was one of the most brilliant, complete messages that fulfilled such a need in me and I think many. Just this morning my first patient, um, Catherine and I have talked about her before, is very very painful childhood, and I've worked with some visual centering 
with her, and she's got Catherine's book, and she's halfway through. And I print it out. I ask Gabriella to email me the printable forms of the messages, and I printed them out for her. And I said, this is a piece of your story. This will help. So not only are these messages, you know, for us, there are countless people that when they come up, they are catching the highest vibration of light for the what the whole planet needs because these messages literally travel to almost every country around the world. If you have Internet, you have somebody there who is following and anchoring the, these messages in this light. And sure enough, they are applicable, real-life messages that help us with the day-to-day. They're, they're not, as they joke, they're not sitting on a cloud talking about <laughs> cloud stuff. This is in the daily life, daily things of managing our hearts and our minds and becoming masters here while we're still in this 3D world. And it was so helpful to just be able to say, I have a piece of the puzzle for you, and this will help you heal at another level. Um, Such a joy to be able to share that um, for somebody that doesn't necessarily follow the messages, but it doesn't matter. This will help. Mm -hmm. So the other piece Um, I wanted to highlight was a... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. There was one well, um, okay. very unique. I'll, I'll say what I go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go to ahead. get the email messages. You said you called Gabriella to get it. If you if people sign up for the messages, they come in the finished format by email. The Facebook format is not complete because Facebook takes all the formatting out of the message. So if people are doing translations or they're doing, you know, or sending on an article, I really prefer that they use the original, which is the one that comes by email. There are some differences. So if you have the email version, that's the one you can copy and paste or print. You can print it right out from the email. So that's I wanted to add that for people. You know, it's not hard to get. <laughs> they're they're easy. You of just... course, I just completely brained out on that one. Of course, yeah, <laughs> I did it right in my box. Okay. Mhm. Yeah, and both of them came by email. Mhm. Gabriella's um, article and Lucifer's channeling. So they work together on that. Anyway, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, that was perfect. We want people to know they don't have to go around the world in a day to be able to print these out. So that's wonderful. Um, And as Catherine said, you can sign up to receive the messages right in your email box on her org website. I wanted to highlight how people are on the page using the messages for... um, for highlighting something in their personal lives. So we have a member named Carlos who is from, he's on the admin team, and he's from Spain. And they have the first case of Ebola in Spain, in his hometown. Oh, and, his hometown. oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, yes. And so he had this very powerful post um, th- either this morning or late night, depending on what time in, in Spain it is. And he took the message and took the understanding um, on a message from um, one of Catherine's recent messages that said, you cannot fight darkness. You cannot defeat darkness by fighting it. Mm -hmm. The only solution is filling the void with love because darkness is a void and fill it with love. So... Carlos says, I've decided to change Ebola with a new personality as it is going to be heard quite a lot these days. And he renamed it E-B-O-L-A, Enlightening Being of Love and Action. (laughs) 
So here is a person who says, okay, this ward is charged with darkness, and I'm going to take the messages, and I'm going to change this whole energy and fill it with light. And it's Mm -hmm. such a perfect example of how anything that affects you in your own life, if it feels like it's a void, if it feels like it's darkness, if it has a charge of negativity, rename it. Put something else with it. Somehow create this light-filled energy and fill it. It was marvelous. I'm going to use that. And I was like, what else can I rename? It's brilliant. Thank you, Carlos. Yes. I wanted to highlight that. Great. Very applicable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) All right. We're going to, um, how, we need another word, not defeat, eliminate, no. Um, Neutralize. Revise. Revise Mm -hmm. darkness. Turn it into light. Okay, well, I think we managed all the announcements and then some. So that's an update on on what's going on on the Healing for Ascension Tour group page. So it's easy to get there. Just go to Facebook and type in Healing for Ascension Tour group. Join up simple and start reading these treats. And when you sign up, you get these messages in your e- in your mailbox, right? If you if you ask to. Am I right, Meg? Yeah, they come right in your mailbox. Okay. All right. So, I suppose it's time to call on our friends in high places and see what they want to talk about. Now, they told me they were going to come together, so I don't know exactly how they want to manage this, since there's only one of me. (laughs) So we'll take turns, I guess. (laughs) Um, They've asked... Okay, we, we were told initially that I was channeling Prime Creator. And then, as things became less formal, um, he called himself Creator, plain Creator. Kind of a nickname, I guess. <laughs> and then a few a few channelings ago, uh, we were told that Prime Creator has a name and, in fact, is a soul, a combo soul, like all of us, that has a male and a female element that can separate out but don't have to, that they are, they work together and generally are one. But talking with us and for the purpose of creation, they experience both male and female. So they're coming to talk with us in their unique voices. And they have told us he is called Ohara and she is Omara. So these are the higher selves of Prime Creator. And Ohara, whose theme song lately... <laughs> whenever whenever he wants to talk to me, I hear, um, every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. <laughs> so I hear the whole song playing in my head, and that's O'Hara. So that's what I've been hearing today. And sometimes... Hmm. When they want to remind me that they're there for me, they put me on hold. So I'm hearing the music <laughs> all day long. Oh, my goodness. So we joke about it. It's like I'm on hold. That's when I know they want me to know that they're there. 
and that there's something coming. So it's like it's like the music that plays when you're on hold. Right? <laughs> so today it was O'Hara playing Pennies from Heaven, and um, they haven't told me too much about what they're going to talk about tonight, but. I had this little, um, you know, I've been doing this channeling for a long time, and there are sometimes some surprises, but it always comes out just fine. And when I'm channeling new people, I, you know, I used to always think, oh my gosh, what if I can't reach them, or what if this doesn't come out right? But it always does. So, <laughs> but I had that little feeling, what, what's up? Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what's up. So I'll step aside and let these two come through. Probably O'Hara will speak first, and then we'll have a little transition so I can catch my breath and come back and say hello, maybe. We'll see. Wonderful. All right, Catherine. We'll give you a second to... Center and take a couple of nice breaths and connect with your new friends. It's been several times you've brought them through, but reach out for your connection. And we welcome O'Hara. Welcome to our family. Thank you, dear. Dear Meg, you have done such a beautiful job. I I want to congratulate you on your your new manual for nutritional healing that is such a help to folks the work that you've already done and having this in their hands is going to make such a difference to people and you're putting it in a format aren't you so that people can print it out yes they'll be able to download it right to their computers oh good So we're looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Everyone is looking forward to seeing it. So thank you, dear. Yes, you're welcome. Now, we don't have um, earth-shattering news for you, but we do want to make a connection to talk with you again in the way that we have been to help you to understand we are here. We are here for you. We we know you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how souls are created. That was as much as I told Catherine about just, I'd talk about souls. Well, I'll bet you have all wondered where do souls come from? How does a soul become a soul? Who creates you? Who created us? How does this work? Well, I can tell you a little bit course when you ascend and you're, you find yourself in higher dimensions, you will have all this information avail, available to you and you'll be able to explore further. But for the time being, I'll give you a little picture. You know, Catherine has also channeled one And she described when she channeled one that she had to reach and felt the powerful energy of one. It's true. One is the source of all things. Without beginning or end. Do I know who created one? No. I don't. One, no. I don't know. 
there are mysteries that we do not have the answers to. I know that one is the powerful force of light and love. And I do know that we came from one and that it was like a birth. Although when a soul is born, you're not born as a baby, of course, but you're born in a state of wonder, certainly. Even surprise. (laughs) And the feeling, ah, here I am. And immediately, well, that's a relative term, of course, the feel of it was, here we are, and a feeling of overwhelming love and affection and safety and sweetness and wonder. And then, as you've been told, A soul divides into male and female and experiences all kinds of things around the universe until you reach the point where you feel you have completely experienced your independence, your uniqueness. And when you've done that, there is no more need to be separate or unique. And then you and your, what we call your twin flame, can come back together as one. This is a process that Omara and I experienced over millions of years. Thousands, of course, of incarnations. And yes, we still experience incarnation. When we feel it will be helpful, when we have a special mission to accomplish, and we want a representative on the ground. And this we have done at this time on planet Earth because it is such an... We have sent an emissary among you. I feel Catherine's dread emerging. I promised her I would not reveal things that she cannot. Hmm. That she cannot hmm, comfortably live with. But I will introduce you to Omara, who is our channel. Now I have very conveniently put a little bit more of a veil for Catherine so that she may not remember that I've said these things. And I want to assure you that this will be the only time we will discuss this. And it will not be public knowledge as far as printing it or putting it out to the world This is not something that Catherine wishes to advertise. But we want you to know that we're there with you. We want you to know that we care and that we send our emissaries to help you. And I know that you felt this, those of you who are on this call. You've made the time in your lives to set aside these hours to listen. You have been dedicated to your work as light workers, to your own growth, and we know that you appreciate the information we bring you. I thought it was important, and Omara agrees with me. Omara, of course, is the higher self of Catherine. We felt it was important that you know that the information you find here comes directly from us. And we chose to use 
uh, Catherine as our channel and our emissary because we know that the information will be pure and will come to you exactly as we intended. And that has been true. Every word. I have a confession to make. All those messages. Catherine thought it was Rao. First, we called ourselves Yahweh. All the messages that have been named when God pinched my toe actually came from me. It was a bit of a test to begin with to make sure that we would be able to transmit the messages purely and accurately And as soon as we saw how successfully we were doing that, Sananda joined in and he sent the new scriptures. So we want you to know that these messages that you are reading come from us, the one you call Prime Creator. Now, of course, you've also heard from... St. Germain and Lady Portia and many of the other archangels and masters, and they did come of their own volition and with their own voices. You can tell the difference. You know when it's us. You can tell the energy in our voices. And when it's one of your other favorite masters. And so we want to reassure you that although there have been some places where there might have been a few um, discrepancies one year to the next, we have told you the information as we felt it was appropriate to do so. And sometimes we revise a little bit as we go. But our word, are written down exactly as we said them. So if there are any discrepancies, it was because our story was, was, um, let's say, shaded in one direction in order to make a point, and then later we added more information to fill out the story in a different way. Everything we have given has been transcribed just as we as we gave it to our dear channel. She has vowed that she will not add or subtract anything, and she has been true to her word. And sometimes we take advantage of that a little bit, as we're doing tonight, because I know she does not want to talk about these things in public. She does not believe that a master's name is a ticket for anything or should be promoted in any way. But we want you to know. We want you to know who our representatives are. It's time now. Because you, dear ones, are masters. Many of you are soul projects. And I want to describe a little bit of that to you. For an as an example. She came here as a soul project. She has, of course, Omara as her primary soul component. Also a bit of Lady Portia. and Tara. So this is why Gilful, in reporting the financial and social information, and this is why she was attracted to the studies that she took part in for all her lifetime, and the part about Tara, of course. It's why she is so 
connected, so anchored to the earth. Now, recently, there is a reorganization going on with all of you. We mentioned it to you earlier. The parts of your soul that were shared, and it's a very common practice because lots of masters want to share with their friends and loved ones. They want to mix things up, have the experience, and also share their feelings and their expertise with their other loving masters. And so, the part of Catherine that was um, was a ray of Lady Portia has now been removed and replaced with a ray from one. One is in charge of all soul projects. And so those who take part must must uh, contract for this ahead of time. Those souls that want to take part in a particular, to come in a particular body and take part in that experience. And then it is one who will say, yes, it's time for this one to leave and for another to come. And so the part that was the ray of Lady Portia has been rededicated to the one who is here as her representative. And I know that there will probably be someone here on this call who will accomplish what Catherine has been wishing. And that is, in her words, it was, I think I owe Méline Lafont a real apology (laughs) because, of course, there were two saying that they were Lady Portia. And and now we want to reassure Meline Lafont, who is a lovely young woman who is channeling St. Germain and is the twin flame of St. Germain, needs recognition and needs to be reassured that there is no competition. Um, we did use the name of Lady Portia for a time, because it was appropriate to the needs at the moment. We did not want to yet announce that it was Omara and I who were actually bringing through these messages. So with the permission, of course, of Lady Portia and St. Germain, we have used their names in the past. Now, this does not mean that the channelings that came from their higher selves were were not Lady Portia and St. Germain. They were. So it was, uh, it's just part of the organizational shuffle, let's say, that each one is now feeling more themselves. And I know it was a relief for Catherine, (laughs) and also a pleasure. She mentioned the day that one came to, to elevate her to a very high level in order to remove the soul ray that was from Lady Portia and replace it with the ray from one. She felt it immediately and it, well, you might say, tremendously energized by it. So this is part of the way we work. Many of you are feeling this process. Many of you have had similar experiences. The way Catherine's described it was that she felt like she was being lifted right off the bed. And she felt a high energy, electrical energy coming through. If you have also experienced something like that, you can be assured 
you are receiving a great blessing. It may not take the exact same form, but you know when you feel that. It is a blessing. And you must not be frightened or or disrupted by it. It is in order to expand and... How shall we describe it? To restore you to your original self, getting rid of anything. It's it's a wonderful thing to share with a, another master. But there is a kind of distillation that occurs when you reorganize and take on more of your original higher self. And that is happening for many of you. It was a time when many of the masters wanted to come here and wanted to share with others. It does create a kind of stability and a kind of far-reaching wisdom and what shall we call it? Well, it's a kind of creativity. You know, generally when you come here to inhabit a body on planet Earth, the energies are so heavy and the time is so limited. You don't have time in one lifetime to be an artist, a musician, an engineer, an architect, and pilot. So you may want to share a life with other masters, the the rays from other masters who have done those things. And then you end up with a kind of conglomeration of wisdom and attributes that is very interesting and makes you very versatile. And so this is why you are seeing so many, call them the crystal children. They are those who are so highly tuned that are coming now. And many of them are soul projects. And so this is how we accomplish it. This is how you accomplish it in combination with one. All soul projects are in agreement with one. And so one is also overseeing the soul projects now on Earth, as are we. Now you might, I told you I would tell you how how souls are created. I got a little ahead of myself. A soul is born entity who will be the creator of that soul comes together, male, female, as you think of it, with the loving concept, the inspiration, the sense of caring and love, and the commitment to oversee, to love, and to care for the soul they are about to create. It is the the female part of the soul who carries and gives birth to the new soul. With the male part, you might call it overseeing, embracing, watching over the process with great love and dedication. It is not the same kind of process where you have a gestation period and you um, give birth in the way 
that a that a physical body would be birthed. For us, the work of creating the child comes before. Envisioning what the soul will be like. Creating a particular kind of soul with a particular kind of personality. And, well, those words don't really apply to souls, but it's the best we have. There are variations, of course. Every soul is a little different from every other soul. And that's what makes it so fascinating. So Omara and I, when we created this universe, and even before, to many souls, most of you are in that group. And most of you were born as souls millions of years ago. I know when you're here on planet Earth, things are difficult, you feel stuck. It seems as though you get things right, you get impatient with yourself. But the reason you get impatient is because you're so used to living in a higher dimension where you can create in a way that requires your attention, your creativity, your thought and feeling and passion, and it occurs. This is the way a soul is born. Great thought and and creativity and creation of every soul. But there it is. Now, you get used to this when you're in higher dimensions, and then you come here to planet Earth, and everything seems to take forever. You're experiencing that now, aren't you? You're waiting for the RV. It's really only been a few years, but it feels like it's forever. Well, it isn't, I assure you. It is not forever. You are going to be blessed. And when you are, it will be very difficult for some of you because you won't quite have a clear picture yet of what you want to accomplish. Those days are here. Envision the projects you want to do. Envision how it will play out. And so it shall be. Because in these days, as you raise your vibration, you too are becoming creators in the same way that we are. Your intelligence, your passion, all of it comes together to create these wonderful projects that will be the new golden age on earth now I've given you a sense of how things happen how souls come to be it is a process that is always overseen by one there is no soul that is ever created without the knowledge, and so those of us who are the creator, when the soul is born, are really, you might say, surrogates for one. It is the love and the energy of light that comes through us and into the new soul that's born soul is eternal. Once a soul is born, that soul is forever. 
Now, the only exceptions to that we have come up against in recent, well, in your earth years, in recent years, and that is the story of the dark ones telling you in the recent weeks. Those who deliberately changed their DNA in order to to not feel love, to escape from the connection to their creator. Those in some circumstances will be dispersed back into the great energy of light. The ones who who will not after having been given millions of years of chances, and especially in the last few thousand years, many, many opportunities to come to the light. They will be given more lightly, and it is only when they choose themselves to end their life as a soul that that would happen. It is the choice of the one who does not want to come to the light. Only they can decide that their time has ended. So when we create a soul station that it is forever, and so we get to know you very well, you know us very well, We have spent millions of years together. And this project, the ascension of planet Earth, is very dear to our hearts. There are friends and neighbors from other galaxies, from all over our universe. It's hard for you to imagine, isn't it, that your little planet that's been here at the edge of the Milky Way galaxy can be so important to the entire universe, and in fact, to the entire multiverse. But so it is. And the reason for that is because you are learning to make such a leap from the third dimension, you are literally climbing the ladder. You're going to go right on past the fourth dimension, or I should say through it, because it has been restored. You're going to go right through the fourth dimension and into the fifth. And there, from the fifth, you have access to all dimensions. very difficult to describe what a dimension is because it isn't like a layer cake or an onion. Dimensions are more permeable than that. One who has done their work and lived many, many lifetimes has raised their vibration to a very high level and to whatever level they are comfortable. And then from there, work their way higher. So when you have reached the level in yourself as a soul that feels comfortable enough for you, you can rise to the next level. It is not like graduation or someone gives you a diploma. You choose it yourself. How hard you want to work, experiences you want to take on, it's the same as what you're doing here, just at higher and higher levels. And this work you're doing here in the third dimension, for some of you, will actually help you to move to, let's say, the tenth dimension or the twelfth when you ascend. 
So it's not only that you're going to go from the third dimension to the fifth, and that will be, you know, the great triumph, much higher levels. And many of you have already inhabited those higher levels. You are the masters. You are the ones who are very capable of going to much higher levels. And there you will reunite with your loved ones and friends. Ah, what a party it's going to be. We've talked to you about the celebrations. We're already celebrating in the higher dimensions. It is a wonderful time. There have been great challenges, yes. There have been some real challenges with the dark ones. And given that we don't just snuff souls out, it has taken great creativity. Many, many earth years to bring the dark ones back to a point where they were even willing to consider coming back to the light. That has been the great battle, as you call it, between good and evil. But of course, it never was really a battle. We always knew that the light would transcend all in the end. There was no question about that. This is what we're hoping that you will learn from these teachings. There has never been a question that love will transcend all. It was really a matter of how and when. How we would manage the challenge of the dark one. How we would convince them that it was time for them to finish with this wayward project and come back. This has been your work, beloved one, planet Earth. And this is why all eyes in the universe turn toward planet Earth because everyone wants to know how this is being accomplished. The dark ones have been restricted to certain areas because they have broken every treaty. Not all of them, but the ones who have. So they are not found in every part of the universe. They cannot go above the lower fifth dimension. So here they are, making trouble, challenging everyone, And you, dear one, were up for the job. You volunteered to come here as the ones who would win over the dark ones. Your mission here, to find a way to convince them, not simply with the carrot at the end of the stick, that we need, but also to show them on their own level, that goodness, light, is more powerful program that they've been trying to convince you of since the day you were born, that evil has power. It is not true. Bodies have power. Souls have power. There is no power in darkness. It's simply a void. It's nothing. This is what we've been trying to teach you over the last weeks and months when we asked our dear channel to come with with us every day to give you a message. We hope that you have learned what you needed from them. They have been very complete. 
they have covered a lot of ground. And if you use all the tools that we have given you, the book, the videos, the messages, the radio shows like this one, if you are attentive, if you are open, then you are with us now and you are feeling the high vibration. You're feeling the exhilaration and the excitement that we're feeling now. It is a historic time. And yes, it is taking time to play out, of course. Of course. This is a global and not only global in terms of your earth plane, but it is a universal shift. It is a multiverse shift. Earth will be operation, the lead, but it affects every being, every conscious being, all are involved in this same process. It is a wonderful time through our eyes. The challenge that you have taken on so courageously because we know what it's like when you're there. It feels as if every day is the last day of your life. It feels as if the struggles are overwhelming sometimes. It feels as if the dark is winning. If you watch your television, which you shouldn't, I assure you, beloved ones, the dark is not winning. There is no such thing. Our struggling together to save the souls of the dark ones not to defeat them, not to wipe them out, but to save them. And you, dear ones, are our emissaries, our boots on the ground. You are the ones who are doing the work to try to convince the dark ones to turn back to the light. It is a heroic effort, so many. But they are souls. They are living consciousness like you. And we want them back. We want them to see the light, literally. And this is why you came here, to rescue them. And in the process, to support and love one another. And that is what you're doing now. You're expressing your love more and more every day. The light workers around you are joining hands, covering each other, aren't you? Your numbers are growing. More and more are awakening and realizing they're here for this great purpose. And it is happening. Your work is nearly done. And then, of course, you'll go on to other soul projects. Other, well, I mean, by that, not necessarily other combinations of souls, but other work that souls do together. For there is an endless, endless great universe that we are a part of, and there are other universes beyond ours, many, many, many. It is endless. Excitement, the pleasure, 
the possibilities are endless for exploration and growth, for exhilaration, and most of all, for love. Now, speaking of love, I want to bring my beloved Omara and let her finish this conversation. She is the one who speaks most eloquently of love. And so I want you to know, everyone, we are here. We are here for you. We came to tell you that and to give you a bit of an example of how we're here for you. Now I will pass the talk, as you say, and and let's give Catherine a moment to rest her voice. And if you would, dear Meg, you can come back and speak with us for a few minutes, or speak with the group for a few minutes, and... Let Catherine have a sip of water. So I'll say so long, farewell, until we speak again. I am your creator, O'Hara. Hmm. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I just my Catherine? eyes just popped open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're back from the back from the abyss. Mm. Oh, I feel so rested. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> what a little horse. I need <laughs> I have a cup of tea yeah. right here with me. Good. <clears throat> Good. So we're having a transition between O'Hara and Omara, right? Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah, and he says, Omara is the one that speaks the best of love. So he wants to introduce her. All right, so I completely lost track of time, and I'm here by the fire. So I'm leaving all this up to you, Meg. You'll... You'll keep us on track. I'm I'm going to go back and dive back in and see. <laughs> see okay, we are doing things. we're doing terrific. So you dive away. Okay. So the one coming next is Omara. All right. So we'll just give Catherine a chance to reconnect. And take a deep breath and reach up for our beautiful Omara. Welcome, Omara. Ah, dear Meg, hello. (laughs) Hi, welcome. Thank you, dear. Well, Omara certainly gave you quite a lesson about soul birth and soul projects and try to give you a sense of what your mission here is. So I'm going to give you the a little more of the feeling side, how we see this, how we feel about what you're doing, and also a little encouragement. I like to bring the encouragement and the love and the reassurance because we know things are difficult for so many of you now. And it helps to keep your perspective. I know that you've been told a few times 
the rather shocking that, you know, when you sign on to come to planet Earth, it is with the understanding that a life here is a tremendous learning experience. And part of that learning experience for many has been to live a life as someone who's rich, with great power, or to live a life in abject poverty, even one where you would starve to death or be abandoned on a desert in a sandstorm or off to war and lose your life. You know there are many, many lifetimes like that. Many of you have had such traumatic ends. Although dying of starvation is not the worst. In fact, it can be rather peaceful. None of you have to worry about that. You're all worried about your waistlines. But there have been many lifetimes on planet Earth where you chose a life where you knew the end would be either sudden or difficult or in some way less comfortable than what you insist upon these days for your lives. Once you're here, you know, when someone's ill, you try to keep them alive forever, even if they don't want it. There has been a misunderstanding about the difference between life and death. It is practically nothing. Just shedding this shell. So whether a life ends like a shooting star or like a speck of dust, it really doesn't matter. It is your soul that lives on. It is your soul who has determined what this lifetime would be like. And if you're having trouble now, if you're being pushed to the limit, it probably means you are a master and you have chosen a life in which you would be pushed. Congratulate you for that. Many of you who are talented and creative and resourceful and industrious have lived lifetimes where you had plenty. And you've taken a turn in recent years to forego those ambitions and to work on your own spiritual development and to try to help others with that, with healing with growth. It is, we know, by earth terms, a real sacrifice to do that. It means you give up the comforts and the security. Many of you have done that. Probably all of you. I'm looking at all of you as I'm speaking to see if I'm telling the truth about all of you? Yes. Everyone has changed things in their life. It may not be a completely turnabout change, but for many of you it has been. Beloved Catherine, Mm, she's still listening. (laughs) she has changed her life quite a lot from a very comfortable practice of psychology to spending every day working with us from a rather secure and comfortable lifestyle to living on the precipice 
as most of you do. Not knowing from one day to the next where you'll be or what you'll be doing or what life will bring, many of you have risked a great deal to reach out, to test yourself, to forego the 60-hour-a-week jobs, to spend time truly learning. Oh, there is a noise here with some, some mechanical devices dying <laughs> or complaining. Not too worried. So most of you have turned away from the great project that was designed by the Dark One, that you would all work yourselves to death and completely forget about your connection to us and your connection to one. Now is the time for you to revise all that. You know that. You felt it coming, haven't you? You felt the gradual shift as you're receiving the light as you're traveling through the plasma belt you're gaining in strength every day and those old ways are becoming less and less interesting less and less appealing and the job that you didn't like before becomes intolerable and many of you have made sacrifices. You've asked your families to make sacrifices so that you wouldn't die a tedious and long death at a desk doing something you hate. We honor you for that. We congratulate you for your courage and your conviction, for your drive, to be the authentic self that you want to be. And now I think I should ask for Catherine to come back and take care of this strange noise that's happening here. I will do that. I'll stay right here and ask her to come back and take care of this Hi, everybody. <laughs> I feel Omara's presence. She's asking me to check the refrigerator. That sounds like it's on its last leg. Hang on a second. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's really groaning. I know what it is. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Nothing like a good mountain cabin to keep us on our toes. Yes, the the uh, used refrigerator sounds like it's um, had its day. <laughs> I wonder well, if bring on the and we're ready. <laughs> what? Bring on? Bring on the free energy, and we can be done with it all. The free energy. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Well, sorry I had to interrupt Omara, but I'm sure she'll pick up where we left off. I feel her presence here. She's ready to she's ready to go. Okay, so I'll tuck myself in again. <laughs> and here we go. All right. I'm back. I could have fixed the refrigerator myself, you know. It's only a matter of turning off the knob. But we did need for Catherine to get up and go over there to do it. (laughs) (laughs) There are many things we can do, but opening a refrigerator door would take quite a lot of effort. 
this is why we call you boots on the ground, you know. You're the ones with hands and feet. And so you're the ones who are accomplishing what we need to be done now. What we all need, not just O'Hara and me, not one, not just what you call God. You know, the way we've been describing the higher dimension, you might get the feeling that there is no one in charge. And in a sense, that's true. There is no one in charge. One, of course, has the final say about everything. Is the beginning and the end? Well, there is no end, but has the last say, let's say. But even one does not control, does not charge. Not in the way you might think of it. One is not a general. Here in the higher dimensions, we have a very democratic process. You might call us socialists <laughs> in that we all help one another. There is no one better than the other. It is equality in the sense that every soul has value. And there is no measurement of one being worth more than another. There is no such thing. Every soul is known as precious and priceless and unique. So there is no measure. It's not that one is higher and the other lower. There is no measure of the value of a soul, the one who created all of us. We call that one, one. There is no two or three. There is only one, and we are all a part of that one. Every single soul is of value, immeasurable value. Now, of course you know we we work hard. We elevate ourselves. We live lifetime after lifetime, climbing the ladder. Yes, there is a ladder of sorts. But it's what we do, we do it for the thrill of it, for the exhilaration, for the triumph that we feel. There is no competition. Everyone has the same opportunities. Everyone has the same will to elevate themselves. Now, this is really the trick, you know, that has made it difficult in dealing with the dark ones. They have the same will, the same energy, the same drive that light workers have, but their drive is to destroy. Our drive is to create. So you see, there is no difference. They have no more power than any other soul who is working for the light. They simply have a different agenda. And because they are so extreme in their actions, it gives people the sense that they must have 
they must be more powerful if they can, you know, behead people or or do horrid things that you could never do. No, it's not that they have more power. They simply have used their soul energy in a different way. And that's all it is. Now, when you're in a body, they're dangerous, of course, to your body. They're dangerous only to your body. They are not any danger to your soul. Now, we have, of course, made... Uh, we, we have put down the law that we will not allow nuclear weapons because the enormous nuclear explosions that they were carrying on were in danger of disrupting soul organization. When a planet is destroyed and all the beings on it, the electrical explosion is so great that it can disrupt a soul. This is why we have refused to allow that to happen. But bodies, well, let me, how can I say this without sounding shocking to you, but bodies are expendable. You put on one, you live a lifetime, you leave, you come back, you put on a different one. From a higher perspective, it is a a sequence, a series of experiences. And every one is valuable and precious. Every human body, precious, yes, needs care and attention and love. And that is your job, to do the best you can while you're here, to care diligently, lovingly, for this body you have been given. And we have asked our dear Meg and Catherine to help you with that, your feelings, your thoughts, your nutrition, and your actions. And in the process, you are developing a sense of wholeness. There is no separate spiritual path. When you're here in that body, your spiritual path, be in that body to experience it fully, lovingly, authentically as the soul you are. That is the challenge. To be the unique soul that you are and inhabit body fully, joyfully, completely. That is the experience you came here for. So don't be in a hurry to leave it. Don't try to reject this body. That, dear ones, would be such a waste. You've put in a lot of time and energy to this project of living out this life. Don't waste it. As O'Hara once said, Catherine. She's remembered this and has repeated it many times because it was fairly funny and very true. He said, it's really a shame. Many people come to this life and spend the whole time looking in the mirror and combing their hair. Well, of course, no one could survive if that's all they did, but it was very funny, and it gives you a sense of the things that you'll notice in your own life where the times when you've wasted your precious hours, 
perhaps it's the television. Well, there's nothing much right now that could possibly help you in your life that you can find on television. Fortunately, the Internet has filled in to allow you to get some real information about what's happening around the world. The citizen reporters, more and more, are doing their job. What's going on in Iraq, for instance? I wish you could all see. Of course, there are terrible extremes. Those that they call ISIS, you know, are just the paid assassins that were hired by the CIA and the Mossad and the Saudi government and a few others who got their hands in there to make trouble in order to make money in order to maintain their control. So it is the last gasp. It's the same people in every area of the world when you see a a dust-up where there's some thugs making trouble. It's always called the powers that were. The ones who have been making trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars creating wars, selling all the equipment, hiring all the people, getting paid for everything from coffee pots to belt buckles to shoes to uniforms to tanks to guns to missiles. All of that, all of it, what our beloved Eisenhower called the military-industrial complex. There aren't enough zeros to count all the dollars that have been spent on war. And yet, you continue to come here to incarnate, to support your brothers and sisters, to help sustain the effort to show That light is not weaker. Goodness is not weakness. Goodness is strength. Light is love. And there is no power in the universe greater than love. You're learning. You're learning to combine your loving energies to focus and to send the uplifting energies that will break through. We cannot save them all. It will not be possible. There will be some who will refuse no matter how hard you try. But we will try. We thank you. We thank you for continuing lifetime after lifetime to offer this service, this life's work of bringing light to those who need it bringing love to those who are starving so that their souls can feel alive again. Their bodies connect then with the soul who came here. It is a connection that's made through the mind and the emotions together. Human beings are fascinating that way. You can discover your soul. If you now are in the process of doing that, to discover everything about your soul, to connect with your soul in such an intimate, deep way, that there is no difference between you. 
and the soul that you are. It is a beautiful thing to see. And we have come to encourage you and to give you the offering of our soul in a body here to help you. We love you without end. We will give anything to help you as you are giving everything to help each other. And ultimately, you're giving everything For this, we will be eternally grateful. You are a part of our hearts. Our connection is eternal. It cannot be broken. Turn away. You cannot feel it sometimes but it's always there. We maintain our connection to you always. It is only for you to experience it at your end. And when you do that, we are one, and you will feel yourself in the light with us, with all the friends, all the souls, all of us here who are working for the same thing, to elevate, to expand, and to bring each other along, every single one. No soul will be left behind. No person will be ignored. No human being will be left. All are loved equally. I cannot tell you in enough different ways which I love you. If you listen, you can hear my heartbeat. You can hear my energy. You can feel it. I send you a rush of love. You'll feel it tingling in your cells. That is my gift to you. Because it is one's gift to me. And you, beloved ones, pass it on. And now, I wish you farewell. That is a lovely word. Farewell. It is not goodbye. Farewell. I am your Omara. Beloved Omara, thank you. And Ohara, thank you so much for your message. We are so grateful. There aren't words for how grateful we are. I feel oh, the tears pouring down my cheeks. Uh, it was mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. Unfathomable love coming from her and from you. I felt very close to her. Yes. 
send her to us. Mm, usually Wednesday nights we're not so um, overcome <laughs> <laughs> with these feelings of love, but I think I need to just um, close the call. I, I don't think I'm up for answering questions. No, there are because none. We're good. Yeah. I think there's... Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. I have a feeling like we've answered all the questions maybe there are to ask. <laughs> well, but I always it was like that. beautiful, beautiful message. We'll listen to this one many times. It was so deep, so loving, such gracious communication. We're so lucky to you, Catherine, for your beautiful channeling and to O'Hara and Omara. just feels like they're our parents in so many ways, and they are in the most profound ways, bigger than we even can imagine what parents are. They are that plus so much. Hmm. Well, we'll let you be with the beautiful feelings that you've just experienced. We're so grateful, Catherine. And we hope your time up in your beautiful cabin is just what you need it to be and everything, including the cranky refrigerator, gets love and attention. <laughs> Complaining again. I thought I turned it off. <laughs> Maybe they just turned it back on. <laughs> Thank you for turning it off, my dear. Now you must go back to being human and deal with the cranky this refrigerator. Can't be happening. I turned it off. I know I did. <laughs> Very metaphorical for what we all do when we click end on our phone calls with our beautiful children and our puppies and our dishes and our lives. So it's perfect. (laughs) But we get to leave just a little bit more loved with a bunch more kisses to to pay it forward. I'm getting a I'm getting a little message here. Um they outed me, didn't they? Yes. Um, I was okay. going to I call you later and <laughs> and talk to you about that, but this is oh. since you know, you know. <laughs> okay, I have a request for people on the who are listening to this that um, I really don't want to talk about it exactly. Oh, I don't know what I want to ask. I really don't know. Well, O'Hara was very, he said he veiled you completely when he brought it through because he knows that you know it doesn't matter who we are in that respect, that a, a master's name is not important when we are working on one project, when we are really one. So he... He said, I just want you to know we're here. It's the only reason that Omar and O'Hara shared this. They want us all to know that they are here with us and sharing this experience with us. They knew this was not something that you at all wanted brought forward in that respect. And we heard that. We all heard that. That they are here with us. And that is perfect. Yes. Well, I'm we are really. all yes, <laughs> and you, of course, yes, 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 yeah. And it's thank you, Meg. As usual, and we wrap things up <laughs> perfectly. And, and, <laughs> and they said, "We are all masters. We are all here with them, with you." doing this amazing project. We've all volunteered. She scanned us. Omara scanned the call. And she knew each heart on the call. 
And she said, oh, so yeah, cool. you have all been here for millions of years, for thousands of lifetimes. So we know you, <laughs> and you know us, and it's just right. <laughs> okay, well, things just get more mysterious every week, don't they? <laughs> and clearer. Yes, that's okay. what they said. There's mysteries upon mysteries, and there's love. <laughs> and we love you. All of you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Meg. Thanks, all of you. Everyone, everyone. on the call. Everyone. Yeah. And everyone yeah. who will listen to this later. Thank you all for your service. All right. We're going to say good night. And we will get together again next Sunday at 2 o'clock for our healing call with Sananda. And we love you and have a wonderful week until then. And good news ahead. Good, good news ahead. Oh, yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Catherine. Good night, Meg. And if you'll just hit the button on the control look. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Yeah.